This is a video for how to go about modeling mechanical motion with VexIQ parts in Fusion 360. You will notice that I have a really basic kind of pulley system. You can't really see like the rubber band part that would fit over the pulley here, but you can see I have a basic pulley system set up. I got my VexIQ parts out of the me modeling mechanical motion activity in your IED curriculum. Um, the VexIQ model parts are right here in the resources, and I'm going to go back to Fusion, and we're going to create something that would run uh, two spur gears together. So I'm going to create my own. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to go to plus, and I'm going to go to save, and I want to call this uh, Vex, let's see here, Vex Video 1. I'm just going to call it Vex Video 1. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in one of these, you know, one by eight bars. It can begin with your students to have like the actual technical names of things. You see a one by eight beam up here, and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, I want to come up and I want to right click and I want to ground this. And you'll notice you have a little push pin. Remember, this means that it can't move. I'm placing this in concrete. I don't want this to move. It's not going to have any motion. It's going to be like the cylinder block everything else is attached to. Next thing I'll do is I want to drag out a couple of these bars and I want to rotate both of them 90 degrees. And I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this out to here. I always tell students when I'm teaching this to Think about if I gave you the actual VEX IQ parts, what would you be doing with them? You'd be moving them all over your desk, rotating them of how they would be fitting into the object, and you, that's how you'd place them on your desk. So this is kind of how we're going to learn to place VEX IQ parts. So we're going to do some joint constraints, and I'm going to flip around to the back, and we need to do a, some revolute constraints between these beams um, and how they relate to this, um, excuse me, these two shafts right here and how they relate to this um, beam. So we're going to go up to joint. And I'm going to go to capture position. And we want to go to motion. And we want revolute constraints is what we want. And I want a revolute constraint. If I go back to position, I want a revolute constraint between this. And we're going to say that interior part. And you're going to see it's rotating right there. Now, I do want to do a little bit of an offset. I want to drag this back about a distance of five. Note that you can come over here and put in a more exact amount with significant digits, but we're going to drag that back about a distance of negative five, and I'm going to say OK. Now, we're going to hold off before doing the next one because I want to place a spur gear on this, uh, on this particular shaft right here, and we want to place that and then put the other one on. We're going to define where we place this based upon its relationship to the other spur gear. So I'm going to grab a hold of this large spur gear and drag it out. And I'm going to place it. And I'm going to rotate this. Oh, let's drag this out so I can see it just a little bit better. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, I'm going to drag this out to here. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm going to say OK. Now remember, this is what's moving onto this object. So we're going to pick it first. I'm going to go to capture position. And I'm going to go right here. That black circle on the outside defines that center point. I'm now going to come up to this right here. We have ourselves a center point. Now, I don't want a revolute constraint, though. I want to go to motion, and I want to go to rigid. And I also don't want this to rest right on the end. So I'm going to go to the top view looking down on our object. And this is a good way to reinforce the concepts of you know how to place objects. And it says negative 10. Uh, let's go about negative 8 for this. Let's go ahead and go about negative 8. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. We have ourselves a rigid constraint right now, and I want you to notice that as I come up to joints, you're going to see that I have a revolute and a rigid. And if I right-click on revolute, you can go ahead and right-click on revolute here, and I go to drive joints, you know, you're going to be able to see, or I go to animate model, excuse me, you're going to be able to see this thing rotate. I go to animate model, and you're going to see it rotate. Notice that that spur gear is sitting on there, and it's going to go ahead and rotate. Now, the next gear we're going to place is one of these smaller spur gears with less teeth, and I'm going to drag it out. Let's get it out of the middle here. I'm going to drag it out to here. We're going to rotate this one 90 degrees. Notice we have not placed this other shaft in there yet for a reason. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's 90. I'm at 95. I'm going to say OK. And the reason is, you know, if I was at my desk putting these physically together, I would be kind of lining these up, well, which fits with what? And like, oh, right about in there is where we would put this other shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and come back. I'm going to go to joint. I'm going to choose right here. I'm going to go to my back view just so I can see a little bit better. And when we looked, it was this one right here that we wanted to place, closest one to it. And notice how that says a rigid constraint. We want a revolute constraint. And we also want to look straight down on the top. And we want to move this back. So if I go to position, 
Now I can go ahead and drag this back a distance of five and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to my house button right here. Next thing we need to do is do the exact same thing we did over here. I'm going to go to joint, capture position. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on my outside circle here. I'm going to come right into the middle up here. That's the one that's moving. We do not want a revolute constraint though. We want a rigid constraint. We're going to go back to position. We can look straight down on the top and we did negative eight. Let's see if it'll go ahead and slide back to negative eight. It's going to be nice and easy there. Negative eight. Say OK. We're going to go to our house button. Now, if I come up and I go ahead and right click on Revolute 1 and I go to Animate Model, you're going to see only that one moves. You know, it's same thing here, you know, in our other revolution. I go to, you know, Animate Model and only that one moves. Well, what we need to do is say that we have a motion link between two things. And I'm going to click on Motion Link. And I'm going to click on Revolute 1. And I'm going to click on Revolution 3 in this case. And you're going to see two selected. And automatically, you're going to see them start to rotate together. And we can go in reverse if we want. See them move. We can go to our front view. Watch them move together. Flip the reverse off. Seems like one's rotating in the opposite direction. This reverse tends to work. You can change the angle. You can change the rotation of what it's rotating around. Obviously, we're on Z here. But kind of a cool thing to go in and take a look at. You know, this one obviously creates the desired output we want. Pretty cool. Go ahead and say cancel. And this is how you would put together, you know, VEX parts and then make these things work together in concert. Neat things that you can do with these worm gears, spur gears, change rotational direction. Um, lots of neat things you can do for modeling mechanical motion in VEX. So this is just from the VEX IQ kit. There's a lot of other things that we can do to you know, change um, directions and do a lot of different things with VEX. So this is kind of an introductory video for modeling that mechanical motion with your VEX IQ parts. So this has been a video for how to model mechanical motion with VEX IQ parts from your engineering design curriculum.